Okay, so we've talked already about how to find the real roots of a polynomial function, and it's time for us to discuss complex roots of my function. So we want to really look at uh, first this fundamental theorem of algebra. It says that if I have a polynomial of degree n, then the equation has at least one complex root, which is what we're going to investigate right now. How do we find those complex roots? Well, let's go back and talk one more time about some properties of the roots of polynomial equations. This first property we've really kind of dealt with already in a previous uh, section. And it is says that if I have a polynomial equation of degree n, then counting the multiple roots separately, the equation has n roots. So what does that mean? Remember that when we talked about multiplicity in that previous section, we could have a function f of x is equal to x minus 3 raised to the fourth power. And that 4 was the multiplicity of this root right here. We know that if this is the root, that because it's an even multiplicity, I touch, right? I touch at 3. But because exponential notation, writing something to the fourth power, implies that I have x minus 3 times x minus 3 four times, we could say that this fourth degree polynomial has four roots. We just don't do that because that's redundant and we're not going to say the, the roots, we're not going to repeat saying those roots that are the same. Okay, so that's what the first um, uh, characteristic or that's what the first property is implying, that just because I have a fourth degree polynomial, um, I technically have four roots, whoops, I have four roots here, it's just they're all the same. Now let's look at the second part of this property, and it has to do with complex numbers. All this basically says is that complex roots come in pairs and they are their conjugate pairs. So if I have a plus bi, the conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. Remember, it's the same numbers only with the opposite sign. And they come in pairs. So over here I have kind of an example. If I know that I have a root of 3i, which is imaginary, then its complex or uh, its conjugate, I mean to say, is negative 3i and these both of these numbers would be the complex roots of my polynomial because they have to come in a pair. So if I have a 2 minus i for a root, I automatically know I'm going to have a 2 plus i. And that's what this is basically saying. So how do I go about finding the roots of a polynomial? Here, I, it, it's going to be the same process we've already done when we found the real roots. So I've already got a picture of my polynomial here on our page, but I want to go ahead and say, okay, if we start with our polynomial, I first want to identify the fact that it is a fourth degree polynomial, which will have four roots, at most four roots. So I put it in the calculator because I'm going to need the table feature in a minute anyway, and I can see that I have, this is a picture of this polynomial. Well, you can see right here that we only have one real root. Remember that the calculator can only give me back real and irrational or square root roots, but not imaginary. So what does this mean? I've got four roots to come up with and I have only one place that it is touching the x-axis. Well, let's think about that for just a second in terms of what we just talked about. I know that if I have four roots, I can have, potentially, two sets of complex roots, right? Because my complex roots have to come in pairs. So two pairs gives me the four roots. Or I could have one complex set and two real roots, right? Two real roots. Because that's two real roots plus my complex set gives me four roots. Now let's look back over here, glance back over here at this picture. What do you think we have going on? Well, if I had both, if both sets of my roots or if all four of my roots were complex, it wouldn't be touching my x-axis at all, period, end of story. 
So instead, I know that this is this scenario right here. The roots that are going to come out of this, when I flush them all out, I'm going to end up having one complex, one complex set, and two real roots. So that's kind of what we want to be looking for. Now, we are going to go back and let me make this a little bit smaller and move it up because the next step that we've been doing in finding my roots, no matter they're real or complex, has been to um, identify the potential, li the list of potential roots by finding P over Q. So in this case, P is equal to, I want to know all the factors of P, which is 10. So that's plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. Then I need to know what are the factors of 1, because I have a coefficient of 1 here. So that's plus or minus 1. So we've done this enough to know that the ratio of P over Q is really just going to be this list right here of my P values. So I'm going to go put, pick, a, pick a number because I've already, like I said, I already have the function entered in my calculator. So I'm going to start with, I don't know, positive 1 because that's always the easiest one to start with. And when I go to my table function and I put in a positive 1 for x, I get 20 back. So that's not a root. Let's try negative 1. Remember, I want to be looking for a y value of 0. So negative 1 is a root that I'm going to use synthetic division on to see if I can whittle this function down. So I know that I'm going to use the synthetic division on this, right? I found that when x is equal to negative 1, I have a root. So using synthetic division, I'm going to uh, put, the, put the value in here. So I have a negative 1, and I'm going to scroll back up and there I can see my co oops, I can see my coefficients a little better to write the synthetic division out. So negative 1 goes out here on my synthetic division and I'm going to go through and I'm going to write down the coefficients. So I have a 1, negative 4, negative 1, 14, and 10. And I'm going to do synthetic division on these coefficients. We bring the 1 down and we multiply and add. So that's a negative 5. This would be 5, add straight down, and I get 4. Multiply, add straight down, I get 10. Multiply, I get a 0. Remember, if I don't get a, re I mean, if I get a remainder of 0, then this was a factor. So I know I was, look I was trying to do this right, or I did it right. Because this is a fourth degree polynomial, and I divided it by basically x, I ended up with a third degree polynomial. This is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x plus 10. Now, I cannot factor this uh, for, uh, third degree polynomial using the techniques that we've you know, that we've already known, like, like what we do with quadratics. So I need to go through and I need to do synthetic, div, uh, synthetic division again. Here's my list of potential roots. We already determined that we only really have one root that's showing up on my graph. This is then a repeated root, isn't it? And you can see that this repeated root is occurring at negative 1. So if that's the case, then let's try to divide this function one more time by that repeated root of negative 1. So we're going to say negative 1. Oops, let's change colors. And again, I'm using negative 1 because I know it's a repeated root. And I'm going to perform synthetic division then on the coefficients of this um, third degree polynomial, which was 1, negative 5, 4, and 10. So we bring the 1 down and we multiply. I get negative 6. So I multiply that. I get 6. I get 10, negative 10, and 0. Again, I get a, a remainder of 0, so I know that this was a factor of 
this polynomial again. So I'm on a roll here. Okay, what have I got so far? Well, I have, so far I have a function that has roots at x plus 1, right? Because it's a negative 1 for the root. And I did that twice. And that left me with this quadratic, right? Which was x squared minus 6x plus 10. Because this is a quadratic, I can either try to factor it or I can use the quadratic formula. Well, if I'm trying to factor this, I would be looking for the factors of 10 that add to give me 6. There are no factors of 10 that add to give me 6. So instead, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula says x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now, so let's substitute in the a, b, and c from this quadratic. So I get a negative of negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is a 1, times c, which is 10, divided by 2 times 1. Now, simplify everything here. The outside number is just 6 plus or minus. When I simplify what is underneath the radical symbol right here, I end up with a negative 4. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. Going further, 6 plus or minus, what's the square root of negative 4? Hopefully you're going to tell me that that's 2i divided by 2. I can now reduce that because 2 divides into 6 3 times, 2 divides into 2 1 time. So this is 3 plus or minus i. Notice that I get, by just using the quadratic formula, the complex conjugate pairs that I need to be able to write my solution here. So going back, I am now going to rewrite my polynomial. Uh, in its factored form. I started it up here, but let's finish it down here. So I'm going to rewrite it now completely factored. Remember, I had that repeated root we could see from the graph, x plus 1 to, uh, squared. Because it was even, it touched, we know that. Now, how do I write this as in its factored form? It would look like x uh, minus 3 plus i, whoops, x minus 3 plus i x minus 3 minus i. And that is the uh, factored polynomial for my function. Now I want to, uh, and, and that's all you would do. You were done. I want to go back and just quickly tell you that this was my list of potential factors or my po list of potential roots that I could have plugged into my calculator. If I go back to the table function somewhere there, if I go back to the table function, I could continue on with that list. I think we had a plus or minus 2, so I could enter a negative 2, and I could just simply go down the list of potential roots, and you're going to find that the only place I had a 0, where the only place where y equals 0 occurred when x was negative 1. And so it kind of helps to validate uh, being able to use synthetic division twice on the same factor. That was kind of uh, a new technique for us. And that's how you're going to um, completely factor and find the roots of a complex polynomial.